licensed by Nick Del Santo to have a really red hot crack in this last. See what they can do to cut this margin. Hosking back to Levy. Seymour, Levy again. What a chain of handballs. Let's end up with the captain, Brennan. Conti with the shepherd. Up towards Wakefield. Oh, what a passage of play out was by the Tigers. Hook taken to the ground. What a tackle from Tuha Garena on her debut. Will she create a goal? Antonio's got some wheels. She'll take them on. Banana along the ground. Oh. The leader it does. What a remarkable goal to get us started. How do you like it? Ebony Antonio. Well, how great was it to have footy back in 2022? There was plenty to love, but there's no denying the fact that unfortunately round one has left a little bit of a sour taste in our mouths. Bulldogs skipper Ellie Blackburn and award-winning journalist Sarah Black join me on The W Show. Thanks to NAB. Ellie, great to have you with us. Oh, it's good to be in here today and obviously, yeah, glad to have round one under the way and ready to dissect it with you guys. And hopefully a win for the dogs in round two. Absolutely. <laughs> Sarah, good to have you on on board on the W show as well. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's been, I think, the longest pre-season on record, I think it's safe to mm. say, so it was great to get some footy underway over the weekend. Well, there is so much to unpack from round one, and I guess we should start with the horror weekend that it was on the injury front. We had three stars of the game, unfortunately, go down with what looks to be very serious knee injuries. And Ellie, we'll start with your teammate in uh, Izzy Huntington. This is exclusive vision that our cameras picked up of the incident and your heart just absolutely breaks. I felt sick watching this. How is Izzy? Yeah, obviously it's it's pretty sort of gut-wrenching watching that over again. And Izzy's she's just such a resilient person. She carries herself extremely well. And, I mean, she's obviously heartbroken at the moment. It's obviously pretty devastating for her. But, no, she carries herself extremely well. And, um, yeah, she's, she's doing okay. And it's devastating, not just for Izzy, but for the club as a whole. As you said, she's such an integral player. You know, the best, one of the best marks in the game comfortably. How do you go about, you know, replacing Izzy Huntington? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one with Iz. Like, you, you almost can't replace her. She's the type of player that she's so unique in the way she goes about it. Her ability to jump and fly and take pack marks is, is really unique and special. So, But, I mean, we have Bonnie Tugel down there. She's a great tour player. And, obviously, um, Nell for us, she's emerging. She's a young star um, coming through the ranks. And I thought she played really well on the weekend and have no doubt she'll step up now. As a teammate, when that happens during the game, I mean, you could sort of tell that the life was sucked out of the game just a little bit when that incident happened. You know, are you aware of, of what's going on and how do you rally the troops as a skipper? Yeah, it's obviously a really a really tough one when that happens in, in the middle of a game. And I mean, Izzy, as, as soon as it happened, I was running right near Bonnie Too Good and I looked at Bon and I was like, oh, geez, I think Izzy, is, she's just done her knee. I think it's an opportunity now for you to step up and, you know, you've got to take ownership down forward. So, I mean, for me, in, in my role, it, it's trying to rally the troops and, and making sure that we're staying focused and focusing on what we can control, essentially, throughout the rest of the game. So the last time she ruptured her ACL was 2018. That was in <coughs> round one. The same round, Brie Davey also ruptured her ACL. It was a little bit of deja vu. Again, our cameras were there to capture the incident. Sarah, how big a loss is this for the Pies? Yeah, it's absolutely huge. She's obviously the competition's best and fairest player, along with Kiara Bowers. Um, there's not many players like Brie Davy. She's just uh, there was a segment in the pregame about how do you stop Brie Davy? How do you bring her down? She's so powerful and strong that not many can go with her. Um, and it's going to be tough for the Pies. They do have a really deep midfield, Ellie. I think, um, but a, a player of Brie's calibre and strength is not easy to to replace. Yeah, I think she's really unique, similar to how Izzy is. They're, they're very unique, different plays, and they're really hard to fill the void in. I mean, Bree, coming up against her, it's, it's as an opposition player, you're like, geez, you, you're going to have it out for you today. She's, it's an absolute nightmare. She's so strong. Her ability to stay composed around a contest and just power her team forward, I think it'll be a huge loss for Collingwood. Can they still win the flag without her? Because they are one of the flag favourites. I think so. And, and like what you said, Sarah, I think they've got really good midfield depth. They've got really good running half-back flankers um, and their forward line. They're, they're agile, they move, they look good. So they've got good numbers and good coverage all around the ground. So I think they can. Obviously, it'll be quite difficult without Bree. 
The horror injury trifecta was rounded out with a Brisbane Premiership star in Kate Lutkins going down. So crucial to their background, uh, to their backline, sorry. And with Emma Zilke and Lauren Arnell retiring after the grand final, Sarah, they just can't afford to lose her. Yeah, she's. I feel like we've been saying this so much. Yeah. She's, she's irreplaceable. We've, we've managed to lose the you know one of the best forwards, the best defender, and best midfielder in the space of one round. It's horrible. Um, but Kate, in particular, the Lions don't have an awful lot of key position depth, especially in their back line. All their taller players are already in the side as it is. So you know you've got um, Jesse Wardlaw and Taylor Smith, Talia Hickey. They're all occupying ruck and key forward roles. So we saw Phoebe Monaghan play really well on the weekend, uh, but she is a bit of an undersized player. They've got Shani Webb to come back, but again, she's sort of those low 170 sort of height. Mm. So to try and replace Kate Lutkins, um, I think a lot of pressure is going to fall on the back of Indy Tahu, who's a second year player. Um, very athletic girl, but, you know, pretty tough to lead a back line in your second year of footy. It is, it really is. And she's one of those players, Luckins, that, that sets up her team around her. Yes, she's really composed in what she does herself as a as a defender, but she's also the, the sort of general down back where she sets up her teammates around her. So, again, another big loss. It was a double blow for the Lions as well against the Crows because they also lost forward Dakota Davidson to an ankle injury. This was the coach, Craig Stasevich, after the game. Kate doesn't look too good, change of direction, no one around her and knee buckles so that, that doesn't look great. Uh, Dakota pushing back after taking a mark and then twisting her foot at a funny angle, that doesn't look good either. Um, you can speculate why that would happen at this time of the year but that's up to you. That's up to us indeed. Sarah? Thoughts? Love a bit of honesty from the coaches. <laughs> Stas is very experienced. He knew exactly what he was saying there. Um, I'm pretty sure he's implying the fact that, you know, we're playing footy early January. It's pretty hot and some of the grounds are pretty firm. So, um, you know, I'm not... I'm not convinced that there is a scientific correlation as yet between hard grounds and, and the increased risk of injury. That's not in my wheelhouse. Um, but Ellie, what's it been like playing out on the fields? We actually have had a fair bit of rain in Melbourne. Um, Adelaide may have been different, but, but Melbourne, we've had a fair bit of rain over winter, summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. And I mean, for us at, at Whit Noble, where we've done most of our work, obviously we've trained there and we played our practice game there and we played there on the weekend. And, and the ground's in great nick at the moment for us personally. I mean, but that's just one ground. So who who knows what, what the other grounds are like? And it's it's hard as a player unless you're kind of there. And, and having a feel as to what it's like, you don't really know. But, I mean, it's really unfortunate on the injury front. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, a hard start to round one. Well, between the injuries and the AFL's health and safety <laughs> protocols, I reckon there's going to be some teams during the season that are going to struggle to actually field a full team, which prompted this from the Bulldogs coach in Nathan Burke. You had quite a few players unavailable for this game. Are you going to yep. get anyone back? <laughs> I, I hope so. So we, we had 24, so we only had the two that didn't make it. So um, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, otherwise, you might have to pull the boots on Sarah because I think we can get people from outside of our list. So look after yourself. Are you game, Sarah? <laughs> Do you want a new teammate, Ellie? <laughs> I've already look. I've already got the Bulldogs gear, but it is South Croydon Bulldogs. So, like, honestly, as long as you're training hard at the moment, we'll do some skills afterwards. So. We'll have you on standby, I have no doubt. <laughs> now, Saturday night obviously wasn't re the result that the Bulldogs were looking for come round one against the Demons. That short-kicking game style that they had really just tore you apart in that first half. Absolutely, it did. And, I mean, if we're having a look at the footage here, they were, they were just really composed and they were willing to take that kick no matter what. Even if we were behind them, even by half a metre, they were always willing to take the kick. They got their numbers out into space. They were looking to move. They were they were looking to create for one another. And yeah, I mean, I got I got front row seats to to what they're able to do and and what they're going to produce this season. And yeah, it was it was really elite. And they drove it off the halfback flank and and they kept moving it really well throughout the corridor. So, I mean, it was um, yeah really well done by them to be honest. Yeah, they were terrific. Mm. Yeah, they really were. And um, speaking of the Nathan Burke presser, he <laughs> did actually drop, let something else slip throughout it um, and said that you yourself had had a fairly interrupted pre-season. Can you sort of take us through, uh, you know, what your prep's been like? Yeah, he has um, obviously dropped that one. Obviously, yeah, for me, I've had some some health issues pop up over the, over the pre-season, which is sort of, I guess, um, you know, 
made me sit on the sidelines a couple of times and, and be really interrupted. But, I mean, good news is, is that sort of heading into the Christmas break and now that I'm feeling pretty fit, obviously still going to build that over the over the season. But, yeah, feeling pretty good um, now heading into the season. Well, it was good to see you out. I think you had 21 touches, which is pretty damn good <laughs> in round one. And I think if you're not blowing hard in round one, what are you doing? Now, I do want to chat about the grand final rematch. Brought forward, of course, in the fixture reshuffle. We weren't expecting that for a couple of weeks. And if you look back through history, every grand final loser has then beaten the reigning Premier the following season in the rematch. So if you look at that graphic there, and it was no different on Sunday, the Crows far too good and Ash Woodlands did the damage up forward. She certainly did and I loved her honesty in the post-match interview. Um, you know, she was asked about that, you know, was, was revenge a driving factor? And she was like, gotcha, yeah, it was. Like, they'd been <laughs> 100%. sitting on 100%. They'd been sitting on that all summer, waiting to get um, waiting to get another crack at the Lions. Um, and it's really good to see players like Ash take that next step forward in their development. You know, she's not one of the, the marquee players of the game, but I think if the, if the competition as a whole is going to improve, it's going to be those sort of, you know, with all due respect to Ash, the, the mid-tier mid players who are going to take that big step forward. Um, and it just showed how dangerous Adelaide can be. They had so much supply through their midfield. Um, you know, Ebony Marinoff, of course, managed to shake off the Cathy Swark tag, which was pretty impressive. And Hatchard was super busy. And I loved the game of Rochelle Martin. Yeah. Um, you know, she's... She's a little pocket rocket, which I love, um, but she just sort of puts a different look through there and um, and it's sort of it's, a, it's mixing it up for Adelaide, which I think is a really promising sign. Ellie, we like to talk about the premiership window in football and with Port Adelaide coming into the competition next season, we're not sure about Erin Phillips and, and her future. Is this the last chance, do you think, for the Crows? Oh, look, I, I think it is a, I guess it's a big window open for him at the moment and, and knowing expansion coming in it's it's the inevitable they're going to lose players to port um, it, it's bound to happen so I think it obviously is a prime time for them I guess it depends how they keep their list yeah. at the end of the season but like you said Sarah they've got really good depth on their list and they've got some young emerging talent coming through the ranks so I mean if they can keep that list together I think it's open for a number of years but I think more importantly this year it's, it's something that I've no doubt they'll be aiming for. Time now for Star Power and Sarah, this week we couldn't go past joint derby medal winner in Ebony Antonio. Yeah, Eb was absolutely superb. She really broke this game open. It was quite a scrappy game. It was very windy at Frio Oval, um, but her class really shone through. And, you know, you look at the stats, three goals, pretty, pretty impressive. But they were three goals kicked from the wing. That's, that's basically <laughs> unheard of. Her running power is immense. And the goals that she kicked were quite extraordinary too. Like, I think, you know, you look at the first one, you're like, well, that might have been a bit of a fluke, but it's gotten in. But all three of them were like that. And didn't she love the celebration afterwards too? Mate, I'm, I'm a fan of the celebration. I, I love a good celebration. I, I do it myself a fair bit. And I love, <laughs> I love watching other players do it. It's just pure, raw emotion with it. And we see here both um, Kiara and um, Ed getting the, the medal for best on ground. Though I'm a little biased. I think it should go to one player. Yeah, it's weird In, having two, yes. isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think Ebb should have got it personally. I mean, Kiara's won it a couple of times beforehand <laughs> already. So it was her moment for it. But, I mean, yeah, incredible goals and incredible performance. You may have a brutal Kiara Bowers tackle <laughs> heading your way next time you play the dogs. I've wound myself up, yeah. <laughs> From one star to another and Mon Conti, the Richmond midfielder just ran circles around the Saints midfield on Friday night. She was an absolute star. Patrick Dangerfield thinks that she can win the league best and fairest if the Tigers win enough games. You know her so well, a former Premiership teammate of yours. How do you stop her? Because I guess uh, the Tigers play the Ds in round two. What do they need to do? I mean, it's it's like we see here that they're, they're going to her right at the stoppage. So Lucas Rod went to her early throughout the game and then I think it changed throughout. I think Woodward went to her. I think Dylan grabbed her a couple of times around the stoppages. But it's not at the start. You don't need to be hands-on with her right from the very start when the ball's going up. It's, it's this moment here where you need to find her because that's where she's most dangerous, when the ball hits the deck and she's moving around. And I think one of the important factors with Mon is that she tries to get that one-two handball. So if you can stop 
stop that second kick because that's where she's most damaging. That's where she gets the ball up and down the ground and, and gets the ball inside 50 a fair bit. But, I mean, she's a good player, isn't she, Sarah? She's going to be hard to stop this year. Yeah, she really is. And she really she needed to stand up in this game. Obviously, the Tigers look like they're going to be without Ellie McKenzie for, for a couple of weeks now. And um, Megan Keeley had a great debut, um, but Mon's going to really have to lead that midfield. Absolutely. 29 touches, uh, 9 clearances and 7 tackles. She certainly did that. Now, traditional rivals Carlton and Collingwood met on Sunday and it was the Pies that got the better of a very undisciplined Blues outfit by 19 points. Carlton conceding four 50-metre penalties in the game, which equals the record for the most in the AFLW. And half said after the game, Sarah, that it cost them the match. Were you surprised to see that from them? Yeah, I think I was more disappointed than surprised. I think you see these... Oh, you're like the, the oh, parent. No. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And I'm not the parent, you are. Um, but I, I think it was, it was... I was disappointed because um, the three 50-metre penalties that resulted in goals came from senior leaders in Darcy Vessio and Elise O'Day. Elise with two for not giving the ball back correctly. And I think, you know, one, you know, you can sort of get caught up in the heat at the moment. But after that first 50-metre penalty you give away, surely you're a bit more conscientious than going, well, you know, I better better not do this again. Um, And it it was a shame for the Blues because they showed a lot of promise. I really loved their run and carry game that they got going in moments. Brooke Walker was great. Um, You know, they really missed her last year. Georgia G was really good as well. And I loved the game of Courtney Jones as a debutante. Um, But they just let themselves down. And, you know, in a a relatively short season, that could cost them. As a skipper, would you address it? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. I think you have to. I, I think it, otherwise it would become the elephant in the room and, and players would talk about it. So I think it's it's important to address those things straight away and I have no doubt that, that they would have done that, especially with senior players being the ones giving away those 50 metre penalties. Time now for our unsung hero of the round. When we think about the kangaroos, we always talk about Emma Carney and Jazz Garner. They're the names that spring to mind. But Ash Riddell for mine, so underrated in that midfield, 35 touches in the game. What makes her so damaging? I think for her, it's her, it's her running capacity, her ability to just keep going all day long. I mean, her fitness levels are, are through the roof and, and so it allows her to get to so many contests. And I actually think she positions herself really well around the contest, but also one thing that is in her favour is that she does have star power teammates right by yeah. her side. So I think the, the opposition tend to focus on the Jazzy Garners, the Jenna Brutons, the Emma Carnies that are, that are in the middle and, and tend to forget sometimes that Ash Riddell is actually a really good ball getter um, and as we've seen here she just gets herself in some really nice positions to win it as well. And pleasingly for North Melbourne um, you know she stood up in the absence of Carney and Ellie yeah. Gavalis. Time now to take a look at what's trending on social media with the buzz. And I want to start with a terrific story. And what a moment it was for Beth Lynch on Friday night. Not on an AFLW list last week, then gets the call up as a replacement player. And this was a beautiful touch, Sarah. Yeah, she's back at Tigerland. So former netballer, she made her VFL debut with the Tigers, um, then went to North Melbourne. Um, And Tom's been a really good supporter of her footy. I've seen him at quite a few North Melbourne games when she was playing. Um, So just a lovely moment between siblings there. And Taylor Harris, of course, made her debut for the D's on Saturday night. And Ellie, your poor teammate, Eleanor Brown, (laughs) got the tough job of uh, lining up on her. But she did a pretty good job. What about this banter on uh, on Instagram? Yeah, I know. Well, credit to Brownie. She did a great job on her but they're they're pretty good mates um, Brownie and Taylor so there was a bit of banter online between them and I I think there was images throughout the game where they were next to each other and both smiling and laughing so I mean I love the relationships that you can build on field um, and off field with with opposition players. Yeah I love it too love seeing that by play Uh, and ABBA was all the rage with the Lions in their premiership year in 2021 but it looks like maybe the Beatles are in for 2022 check this out. I find myself in times, times of, of trouble, trouble. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Beautiful. Well done. Round of applause. Good, good. You want to do the whole course? Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. <laughs> what is this song? Oh my gosh, that that was kind of <laughs> awful. I love Craig Starsmith, but that was so bad. Score out of ten? 
Oh, I, I don't want to. It, was, it wasn't great. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no, I'll give him a five. I'll give him a five. I'll oh, sit midway. Points for effort, surely. Yeah. He was really yeah. into it. And he had the he had the chance to back out of it too, but doubled down with the chorus. I think he must have been watching the uh, Beatles doco of late and, and taken some inspiration from it. <laughs> Do the dogs have like a song that you run with, like in the pregame, in the warm-up or a little theme song? We do. I won't reveal what oh. we what we do. I'll, I'll keep ours a bit more sort of in-house. Oh, but we I do like have it. a song we, we do revert to. Um, but, I mean, I love that. That's It's great to see the coaches sort of letting their guard down a little bit and, um, yeah, having some fun with, with the playing group. All right, we got weeks of the W show. We're going to get it out of you <laughs> eventually. Maybe in the last show we'll get to play the playlist of all the team songs for the season. Ellie, great to have you with us on the W show. Thanks so much for joining us and best of luck against the Cats in round two. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, as always, good to have you on. Nash, good to be here. For mm. all of Sarah's fine work, you can check it out on womens.afl and, of course, the AFLW Live official app. Thank you so much for joining us on the W Show. Thanks to NAB. We'll see you next week.